Right now I'm going to show you a great technique for creating a pseudo HDR. We're working with a single image. In this case it's a 16-bit. It was actually captured as a raw file and then just converted to a TIFF. If you can keep it in 16-bit, that's great because you're going to keep more dynamic range. If you've got an 8-bit file, that's fine as well. It, it'll still work. So what we're going to do is create an HDR toning effect. It's not HDR, but it has the HDR tone mapped look to it. So let's have a look at this particular effect. So we're going to go under Image, and we're going to use the Adjustments, and we're going to use Shadow Highlight. Now one of the great things about this particular technique is it's not just exclusive for Photoshop CS5. It works on CS4 and also on CS3. So let's have a look. What we want to do is in the shadows here, we just want to recover a large amount of shadow. Same thing in the highlight. Let's rec um, bring that back, and you can notice here that we're starting to get a... Uh, a kind of a nice look. I, I actually love this technique that I'm showing you right now. This is probably the one that I would use most when it comes to creating pseudo HDR. Um, I hate to say it, but I actually even like it better than the HDR toning in CS5, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, so the tonal width, if we increase this, this starts to encompass more of the photograph. If we go down, it's only hitting the real shadows. So what we're doing is we're targeting exactly where we want to hit this image. And I'm thinking about here is looking good. And let's do the same thing with the highlights. Let's pull it up. So we're affecting the highlights. We go too far, see it starts to really get in the mid-tones. If that's what you're looking for, that's fine too. So let's do those. And then the mid-tone contrast would probably be the one that we would tweak with it. If we pull the contrast down, notice it shows more dynamic range. If we push it up, there's less, but it's more of a punchy photograph. But watch out for banding in the sky. We don't want any banding. So let's pull that back to about here. It's kind of looking good. And if we want, we could clip the blacks and whites, which means that if any of these whites are going to gray, pushing up the white clip will just force those back to white. And just like same with the blacks, if we want true blacks in here, turning up the black clipping will give us true blacks. In this case, I'm not really too worried about it. Um, so let's go up here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to push up the amount a little bit more, and I'm going to increase the tunnel width a little bit more. And same here, because I just really want to give this a more of a surrealistic look. Now there's a couple of adjustments we want to work with now is the radius. Notice if we work on the radius, now these are really going to be doing something. A lot of the time you might not really understand what radius is doing when you're working in HDR, but this is almost like a light smoothing effect. Notice if we put, pull that radius all the way up, it starts to look more natural. And as we pull it down, it looks more surrealistic. So I'm actually going to go for about, ooh, about there I'm kind of liking that look. And then the same thing we're going to do in the highlights, just work with our radius here, pull that down. And notice as we decrease this radius in the highlights, we get rid of these halos around the trees. Let's increase it and notice we get those halos. It's a very soft look, but if you push it all the way up, it kind of turns into more of a gradient. But let's go down and let's get rid of those halos. So I'm pushing it about here. There we go. Very, very low. And now let's go back to our mid-tone contrast and play around with that a little bit more. I'm going to push it to about there. And what I want to do is I want to set some more clipping in my blacks here. So I'm going to turn this up to about 4. And notice it just brought back a little bit more punch in there. And we're going to do the same thing in the white clipping, except this is more sensitive, so we'll just slide it up a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just pushing this up just so I can see it, just starting to hit the sky there and just add a little brightness to my clouds. And don't worry about the um, overall toning. We can always go back in and use curves later on. So you can see if we look at this before and after, you can see how we've really gone for a pseudo HDR. But we're not done yet. Let's click OK. We apply the shadow highlight. Now we're halfway there. The next one is, you know, notice it's looking very soft. We want some punch in this thing. So we're going to go into sharpening. We're going to go to the filter sharpen. And we're going to use the unsharp mask. And now this is where we get a lot of our punch. Now we go ridiculous with this. I'm going to push this all the way up. And if we look at this before and after, you can see it's really starting to give this an illustrative look. You want to play around with the radius. If you turn the radius up high, notice you're going to get these halos again. So let's just play around with this radius almost as a tone mapping tool. I know this is very sacrilegious for sharpening gurus. But in this case, this is an effect we're going for, so that's okay. So you may pull down the amount now. And let's look at this before and after. Before, 
and after and notice we're really really pushing the sharpening and this is only at 16 percent so if we were to zoom right into this image for example let's have a look over here you can see what's really happening if we look at it before and after so we're really if i just click and then release you can see it sharpens the same down here before and after see so we're really punching that detail now if you've got like large areas here and you're seeing a lot of noise in here you can just pull the threshold up just slightly and if you look at that what that threshold is doing is it's if we look at it here pull it all the way up see it's not affecting those edges too much what we're doing just not sharpening the smoother areas there so let's actually go down to the very minimum we can get away with so zero there it's still one two let's push it to three see three is smoothing out pretty nicely without affecting those edges too much so if we want we can increase the amount to compensate click OK and there's the second part of our uh, HDR tone mapping pseudo tone mapping and then the final thing you may want to do is just tweak around some curves if you want we just go in here click some curves and uh, let's just click this little fellow here and now we can just choose hey let's darken this area here let's find this area here if we want to brighten it Ew, it looks horrible let's drop it down let's give it a lot more contrast here and let's drop this down because we don't want to lose all of our recovery there and you can see what we can do is we can just go in there and then find maybe some midtones here and maybe increase those just be careful though when we do this that you don't start to add too many points that go all over the place it can get a little crazy so one of the other things I like to do is just uh, I like to just maybe just reset this I can just click all these out here just drag them out and I could just manually play around so if I move over here let's take this guy notice though if this is off and you start to move it's not sampling anything so let's just turn that on and as we go over here we can see the different tones so we're looking around the mid-tone here where it's looking ugly let's hold the control key and that'll be command key and just click once notice it adds that point and now we can manually just brighten that up just by pushing it up slightly and then the same thing in the shadows here we could do the same thing or we could just pull it down manually just slightly there we go so you can see how we can do the different things and so that's how we create a pseudo HDR using the um, shadow highlight and unsharp mask inside of Photoshop and as I've said before that works in CS3, CS4 and CS5